So I'm, I'm Sean Uehara. I'm the program director at, at Headlands uh, Center for the Arts. Thank you for coming uh, today. And what I'll be doing is presenting some uh, information on the Bay Area Fellowship Program. And there'll be time for questions. I'm hopeful that I'll be able to answer a number of your questions along the way. But feel free to interrupt me if, if, you, if you wish. There's uh, in the participants window, if, if you're familiar with Zoom or if you're not, if you look at that sidebar where it says participants, you can raise your hand. And if you want to raise your hand, I'll, um, I'll see that. Um, but for now, let's see if I can hide everything else here. So this is the FIFA session. Hopefully you can see my screen here. Um, this is the welcome part of the agenda. Oh, I have the wrong timing. Sorry. This is from the, I'm reusing this from the last info session, but you can just transpose everything five hours ahead. So five to 505, 505 to 510. Sorry about that. I overlooked that. But essentially we should be done with going over the fellowship specifics. Um, let's see, it's 530. So in about 25 minutes yeah, or before six. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, so, sorry, what's that? I mean, the latest ones I've seen, you know, they're probably kids. Oh, there's somebody else. Together, uh, you know, like little tiny things that got lost easily. Um, I can't remember how many So as you're coming in, um, please do be mindful of this. Muting yourself um, unless you want to talk. Okay, so the Bay Area Fellowship, it's a new program that uh, Headlands is presenting. And the point of it is to uh, engage artists as collaborators in developing the ways that Headlands supports them. So a few years ago, uh, Headlands conducted dozens of interviews with artists to just discuss what Headlands does well and what it could do better. And one of the things that um, came up was this idea of basically just asking artists directly what they want. We were doing that in the interviews, but um, that was a reframe, right? Why don't you just ask the people you're supporting what it is that they want? <laughs> and it makes so much sense. But traditionally the way that um, support programs have worked at Headlands and I think most arts organizations that I've had experience with <clears throat> is that there's res a resource that's developed and a program that goes along with it and it's offered to the artist. And it's basically a kind of like a take it or leave it situation, right? Like, this is what we can do for you. Do you want it or no, right? And I think what we're trying to do is be a little bit more flexible by saying, these are the things that we have available. How do you think we should be deploying them for you, right? And in that process, we're also trying to further a lot of the mission specific goals of the organization, of course. Uh, connecting artists to each other uh, and the institution, increasing the effect of um, our work in the Bay Area and to become a more equitable institution. And then of course, to make the support itself more valuable. So as we work through the fellowships, we're hoping to learn uh, as we go, um, but learning, uh, in the course of working directly with artists and hearing what it is that they want and then figuring out how can we offer that or not, right? So there's gonna be a lot of discussion and collaboration and trying to figure out how to get the resources that artists need to them based on what we have. Um, so the overall goals of the program specifically is to support and engage Bay Area artists at key moments in their careers to build meaningful connections between the Bay Area arts uh, community, Headlands, and the other artists uh, at Headlands, to rethink power dynamics between um, arts nonprofits and artists, and to engage with artists as full partners, and to uh, connect fellows to each other through the cohort building process, right? See, just 
there were some people coming in. So the support, the basically um, the fellowships run for two years and they're renewable by mutual agreement after the first year. So we'll work closely with the fellow and just make sure that it makes sense uh, for everyone. We expect it to, I mean, something would have to go horribly wrong or maybe someone needs to move or whatever, right? To um, continue that support. Um, the first cohort is three people. It'll have three fellows in it. And the second cohort will overlap with the first one, right? So one of the ideas for the program is that there's gonna be intentional kind of network building by having the cohorts overlap. So the first one is summer to summer. The second one begins uh, at the um, beginning of the first fellow cohorts second year, right? So there's this kind of checkerboarding that happens and we'll uh, make sure that the cohorts interact with each other. Um, $15,000 a year stipend, tax burden on the stipend and health coverage uh, covered. What that means is that we want to pay the taxes on the stipend so that it is actually $15,000. Um, and then we'll reimburse fellows for their health care coverage costs. So if they don't have health insurance, we would work with them to find a plan and, and um, pay for that. Um, or we'd reimburse them for the insurance that they already have. Um, there's $8,000 more to support fellowship activities um, that are designated by the fellow. And this is pretty wide open. So just as a, for instance, perhaps you want fabrication for a project or you wanna take some classes or you need to hire an accountant, or you want to develop a public program and you wanna pay some people, right? So that's basically the pool of money that you have outside of the stipend to um, do with whatever you want, right? Um, then there's other resources such as if you would like studio space, convening space, uh, staff time and expertise, and other resources uh, as kind of collaborated with and determined by the fellow in coordination with Headlands. So just as a for instance, um, this came up during the last info session. If it would be important to your fellowship year that you would present something publicly, and you think that it would make sense to do that at Headlands, we would collaborate on finding a time for that to be possible. And we do want to present um, fellows work to the public. We expect the fellows in fact to participate in open house and other types of programs like that. But I'm talking about like a bigger project or for instance, if a fellow wants to present work not at Headlands, but with another institution um, in the Bay Area or um, just in their community, we would work with the fellow to make that happen. Or we have people on staff who are experts at finding um, grants, right? And if there's certain things that you're interested in, we could find time to make sure that you would be able to work with them. And there's a lot of really other very creative and talented people that work at Headlands that aren't often formally kind of involved with the artists, but I think that um, it would be good to be able to do that. Um, so before I go on, are there any questions so far about any of this, anything that I've said? I hope you can hear me. <laughs> uh, that'd be awesome. Oh, good, thanks. Okay, good, <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, so, Eligibility, you have to be a Bay Area resident and it's expected, or not expected, it's required that you'd be a Bay Area resident for essentially two years leading up to the beginning of the fellowship. So for this particular inaugural uh, cohort, it would mean that you would have to have been in the Bay Area since July, 2019. Now, people have asked, you know, I'm from the Bay Area, I've been here for decades and I was out of, 
the Bay Area for the last year. So <clears throat> the, the residency um, kind of criteria isn't intended to be kind of like, you know, you're, you have to, if, if you're here for these two years, then everything's cool. And if you're not, then you're out of luck. If you have like a way of showing that you really are part of the Bay Area community, um, we would consider it, right? But in general, if you haven't been here for at least a while, um, then, you know, this isn't the, the program for you. Um, I know that's a little confusing, but it really won't come up unless you're, um, unless you are the, uh, one of the fellows, I mean, sorry, one of the finalists for the fellowship. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But basically, if, if you know that you're part of the Bay Area community and you've been here outside of those two years and something happened like during COVID or something, uh, we can discuss it. Um, so the it's a multidisciplinary fellowship, meaning you, know, you can basically work in any kind of um, discipline. Um, What's required to show a proof of residency? That's a good question. I don't know uh, um, right now, but you know, bills or something like uh, uh, utility bills, um, something like that, or driver's licenses. I don't know. I'll have to do some research on how you prove residency, but it's a good question and that will happen. Um, and it will be something fair. So anyway, the um, the types of practice is wide open. Um, I know that the way that the fellowship is described, that it, it sounds like to some people, because uh, I've had this conversation multiple times, that it sounds like it might be a social practice residency or a social practice fellowship, and it isn't. It's just that you would have engagement with Headlands as an institution. Um, it's not specifically for social practice artists, but social practice artists can apply or public practice artists. Um, but we'll take writers, photographers, filmmakers, new media, virtual reality producers, um, textile worker, you know, there's basically whatever creative discipline you're working in. So the inaugural cohort, so it's intended that over time that the, um, fellowship will be for artists at all stages of their career. But just to be transparent, for this first initial inaugural cohort, we'll be looking for people who've had a little bit more experience in their artistic careers, because we wanna make sure that we understand um, how this will go with people who really kind of understand what they need. Right? So we want people to have a fuller sense of the trajectory of their careers and have had a little bit more experience, but that will just be for the first year that we'll really be leaning on that. And like I said, it's because it's a new program and um, it's important to us to get ex some experience with the program and like understand how it functions. And then moving ahead, we'll accept artists from all stages of their career. So what does mid-career mean? It's, it's not like hard and fast, but essentially like, let's say you're a painter or like somebody who works in the fine arts, like kind of like museum type gallery world. So if you, a mid-career artist would be someone who's had like a couple of solo shows or at least a solo show, right? Wouldn't be somebody who necessarily has had like a retrospective showing, but is somebody that's beyond kind of working in um, like uh, group shows only, or maybe has some gallery, has had gallery representation or something like that. But, you know, that, that rubric doesn't, um, like, it's not the same for like a poet, right? So essentially, what we're saying is we're looking for people who've had a little bit of experience at least. Um, okay, for this inaugural cohort. Um, so the application itself, it's open now. You can get it through um, 
<laughs> when I describe them. Don't try to make me describe mid-career for every discipline. Um, but essentially, you know, you've published a, a book of poetry, right? Um, uh, okay, I'm just reading the chat. Uh, in any case, if you have specific questions about whether or not you're eligible, I'm happy to uh, talk about that um, either tonight or um, separately. Um, so the um, the deadline for this initial application, which is free, is March 19th. You can access it through headlands.org. It's intended to be something that's meaningful for us to be able to evaluate, but we don't want it to be overly onerous. Um, you know, it does require some thought, but it doesn't require like a portfolio of work or like a like sample submission. It requires you to think about what um, you would like to get out of the program and how you would engage with it and like why it would be meaningful for you at this time. At the end of the application, there's a, an optional question to tell us how long it took you to fill it out. It's important to me that people don't fill out applications um, just, you know, as a matter of like intense labor. So we're trying to be equitable in that way, but it's tricky. Um, so we'll review those initial applications. There are outside evaluators who will help us. We have three outside evaluators and Headlands as an institution will get one, one vote, right? So out of that process, we'll um, select six finalists for the three fellowship spots. Um, that'll probably happen in May. And then um, the six finalists will each be paid $1,500 to produce full applications. That's when we would kind of vet your Bay Area residency before asking you to do the full application. And then there'd be an interview, like you'd, we'd ask you to present work samples and then um, we'll invite three people to be fellows. Any questions about that or anything? Good question so far. Yes, uh, Mira. Thank, thanks. Sure. Um, yeah, jump back to the resources um, for sure. these folks. The studio seems to be sort of parenthetical, like addition, yeah. like, can you say our studio is sort of like if there's a spare studio or if no. one needs a studio or, yeah. So one of the things that happened when we did interviews with people years ago um, over a couple course of a couple of years is that some people that we were interested in working with at Headlands said they have never applied because they couldn't couldn't use the studio. Uh -huh. Like they lived too far away, didn't have a car, or they had their own studio, or they don't have a studio-based practice. So what I'm getting at is that we have studio space for the fellows if they want it, but we kind of only want to give it to you if you're going to use it. Right. <laughs> Not kind of. Right. We only Perfect. want to give it to you if you're going to use it. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and there are other aspects of the site that can be um, used, right? And so this, again, just to reiterate, um, we also uh, are very open to the idea of um, supporting work that happens outside of Headlands uh, as a physical site, right? It's important to have some interaction with the site, but we don't necessarily need the entire fellowship to be around the site itself. We want to make sure that we're reaching people where they live and um, like are flexible in that way. Uh, can a collaborative partnership apply? It's not the way it's written. Um, I think I'd need to think about that. I, it's intended to be for one person at a time, like one fellow, but I can think about that. Um, so what criteria are we using? It's a good question. It's the next thing. Selection criteria. So um, strength of artistic work, whether you're pushing the boundaries of your discipline, uh, are you at a pivotal moment in your practice? 
um, with your capacity and desire to envision and collaborate with Headlands on the development of an impactful fellowship year and a desire to connect to other artists in the wider Bay Area community. So the short application asks questions that um, allow us to get at the root of some of these things. And then we'll be looking at your work if we're interested in um, talking with you further, like we'll, we'll find, we'll stalk you online. <laughs> We'll figure out ways to figure out things that you've done. Um, sending in your CV is part of it. So that's just how we'll initially be doing it. Um, another aspect of this too that's not listed here is that, um, as I mentioned, there's a um, there's a there's a need and desire for uh, Headlands to become a more equitable institution. So having a cohort that represents um, Headlands's desires to be equitable is important, right? So we want to serve BIPOC artists. We want to serve artists who um, are underserved in the community or um, who identify um, as non cis, non hetero, hetero, um, are from different levels of education, of different ages, you know, things like that. So, and we also want to have a very diverse uh, cohort. So, we want um, people to represent different walks of life and different forms of practice and to be as eclectic as possible. So, um, yeah, I'm just mentioning different types of equity. It's one of the reasons I'm not listing it because there's a lot of ways to that headlands and, and all institutions and in society can be more um, equitable. Um, so, uh, but that's, that's definitely a consideration. Um, okay, let's see. Is there a particular theme your group is seeking for this inaugural group? No, it's we, we just want people who um, can benefit from the fellowship, are have a way of um, are making interesting work, of course, and um, have a sense of why the fellowship would be meaningful to them at this time. Um, so, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Adrian. Okay, I'll move on. We can re-ask. Okay, cool. So that's the selection criteria. And then now uh, if there are questions, um, I guess I can just add. So the way that the fellowship would work, like once, if you were invited, the first thing we would do is kind of start to develop um, a way for us to understand what kinds of resources would be the most meaningful to you for the year. And we would basically kind of give you a, a, a list of things that might be possible. But we're also very open to people, and we really want people to be creative in, in helping us determine like what we should be doing and what we can do, right? It, I'm kind of excited about doing this because it, it, it uh, helps our work to be more meaningful. So um, we want to work with artists in that way. We're also going to have a retreat with the cohort. So while the artists won't necessarily be working with each other during the year, we are going to get them to interact with each other and give each other feedback on how to use the fellowship so that there can be kind of um, some creative thinking and and just uh, feedback on like how the resources of headlands can be used. Um, there'll be a, like a check-in in the middle of the year where we just kind of assess what we said we were going to do, what our goals were, and um, whether or not we're reaching them. And then there'll be a kind of a debrief and then a reassertion of 
of the program uh, after the first year. And so af at the end of that first year, as we kind of kind of set out to figure out the second fellowship year, that's when the fellows would interact with the new cohort, right? So the first cohort would be able to give information to the second cohort about how the fellowship year went, what kinds of resources really worked, what things didn't work, et cetera. And then we can continue on. It's not gonna be like a lot of reporting and stuff like that. You know, it's not supposed to be taxing for the artists to do this. It's supposed to be that we just think intentionally about what we're trying to achieve for the year. And then Headlands will help to make a roadmap for that to be possible based on what we can offer. Okay. So, uh, questions? Uh, yes, Mira. Thanks, another question. Um, it is, uh, I appreciated what you said about the studio not, you know, some people, the studio may or may not be important and relating that to this interesting, you know, the desire for people to be working where they live. And maybe if you could say like, and, and is there a tilt towards the desire for the Headlands support to be reaching out to other places in the Bay Area? Is that like, can you say a little bit more around that thing you mentioned, if that makes sense? Um, it, I think it does. I, if I understand your question, I think there's two answers. One is I think I maybe, maybe misspoke or just, I said it in a way that's a little confusing. What I meant to say is that overall, we want to meet artists where they are. And if that means working in a specific place in your community, we want to do that. Um, we don't specifically want to work in your neighborhood. Okay, great. <laughs> but, but we would, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, so it depends on what, what the artists need and what they want to do. Um, so that's one thing. And then secondly, in general, um, is there, a, I think the other part of your question is maybe, is Headlands as an institution tilting towards trying to be more active outside of the campus? And I would say the answer is yes. We just uh, closed the applications on our second round of rapid response funding, which is intended to provide mm -hmm. Um, funds to people who are working in their neighborhoods. And that's not to say that the campus isn't important. It, it is. There's, uh, if you haven't been there or haven't worked out there, it can be transformative for people. So if it's something that you feel like you want a kind of refuge, I would consider it, you know, like I think it would be a good thing to do. But, um, but we want to also, um, like I said, we want to be more responsive to people in what it is they need in their artistic practice and in their lives. So sometimes it would mean being on site and sometimes it wouldn't. Lovely, thanks. Sure. What other things can I answer? What are the confusions that I create? This happened last time too. There was a little bit of a pause. Everyone was like, I don't know. But I can just, so this is the teacher in me. I teach sometimes. Um, please ask now because there are many of you and one of me. So like, this is the time where I can get all of these questions answered, probably whatever you're thinking is what someone else is wondering. So I'll just answer the chat and then I see someone's hands. Is travel something that could be covered? Yes. So the $8,000, um, funding per year essentially is for you to do with what you will. We do want to talk about how it will be used, right? And we don't want you to be taxed on it. So we want to have a way of kind of um, just making sure that that's allocated well and doesn't run out. But yeah, travel is something that could be covered. Um, Nancy Kelly. So um, do I understand that you want um, 
fellows to try to work with um, other artists who are in residencies at the at Headlands? Yeah, so not collaborate with them, but we do want you to interact with them. So the cohort at the beginning of the fellowship, the cohort will meet one another, whatever that means today. <laughs> like we're meeting, I guess, technically. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll be able to meet in person. That would be weird and shake each other's hands or whatever else happens. Um, so that would be something that would be part of it. And then there'd be points in the year when we would more or less ask you to come to Headlands, right? So like for open house or um, dinners when the artists in residence are uh, on site or to interact with the affiliates who have studios. So there's just, um, it's, it's, it is an important part of the fellowship that people would want to have interaction with other artists. If that feels like not a great thing, it, and I'm not saying this is what you're saying, I'm just saying this generally, um, it wouldn't be a good fellowship for you if that doesn't sound like something you'd want to do. But um, if you wanted to, for example, um, work with someone, I'm a filmmaker, um, work with someone to create um, storyboards, then mm -hmm. you would look at that $8,000 as something you could use to hire somebody to work with you. Yeah. Rather than be proposing that you would somehow collaborate with someone who was doing a residency. Thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Eight thousand dollars per person per year. So fifteen thousand dollars per year. So over the two years, thirty thousand. Over the two years, sixteen thousand dollars more for additional support, and then the taxes and the health insurance. That's all the money part. And then there's other resources. Uh, Adrian. Yeah. Thanks. I'm wondering about. Um like specific project ideas. So would you say in comparison to the residency program where you sort of suggest if people have ideas of what kind of project they would take on for the time they're at the Headlands, um, is this more of like uh, an, an open-ended kind of project that you would be proposing or would it do, do you expect the finalists to have like a specific idea or is a specific project supported in this fellowship program yeah so um, the the vast majority of our artist support programs are not project specific they don't require a specific thing to be proposed or like a specific outcome and this program is like that um, we don't require a specific project to be proposed. We just want artists to have a sense of what it is that they're trying to do. You know what I mean? Like, where do you want to go with this? Are you, are you trying to develop networks? Um, are you trying to figure out a specific thing in your practice? Do you need um, connections to other institutions? Do you need presentational space? Or maybe you do have a specific project that you're working on, and that would be okay too. But it's not, it's definitely not a requirement. It's just, you, you need to be intentional though. Yeah, and in our, um, in the short application, in the questions that are um, on that application, is that where we would speak yeah. our intentions to be evaluated? Yeah, so the questions relate directly to the criteria. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of the criteria is that, um, that you could benefit from having the fellowship, something like that. I'm not saying it exactly like it's written, but it's along those lines that we want to, to support fellows who would be benefited by the program. So the question is, how would this program benefit you as an artist? Like what, why would it be 
meaningful to you to get it at this particular time. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sure. Um, others? Other questions? This is the time to ask. You, 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 I, I did leave my, um, my uh, email address up there so you can reach out to me if you want. But if you have a question right now, please ask it. <laughs> Just because, uh, you know, we want people to, like I said, other people might have the same question. Okay, Abby. Yeah, thanks. Um, so just to be clear, so this would um, support perhaps a project that was moving towards a, a festival or a kind of a gathering that would happen in the Bay Area. It doesn't have to be just for a, like a, a work of art, but you one would this program support the conception of the festival as a work of art and the <laughs> the curation of that and the the organizing of it. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I think the way that I would want to phrase it is that, the fellowship would support the artist as a person. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if what the artist is intending to do is to produce a festival, yeah. then the fellowship would be, like if that were your priority for the fellowship year, yeah. then the fellowship's resources would be kind of mobilized towards making that happen. Mm -hmm. And so for instance, you could use the money for that um, I and another of my colleagues who's actually on the call are seasoned at producing public events. Mm -hmm. So we would work with you to help if you needed it or wanted it. Mm -hmm. We could help you to kind of navigate um, permits or something if, you know what I mean? Just learning kind of like helping you to open doors yeah. if it could be possible. That said, we can't guarantee anything. Like I, we wouldn't enter the the fellowship saying, at the end of the fellowship, you're going to produce a festival. No, no, exactly. it would be like uh, we would work to support you in that if you were the fellow. Right. Yeah. Great. So that the the dreaming and bring, bringing it into being could be a supported process. Like sure. Supported. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Annie says, I was curious what Headlands is asking here. What Bay Area audiences, communities do you engage as an artist? Does this mean also communities outside of those in the arts? Um, oh, so that's a question from the application. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, I think it's open. It doesn't have to be um, uh, like arts communities. Um, it could be, but... Um, uh, we're just trying to figure out like what your what your commitment is to kind of working with people in the Bay Area in general, and like how you think of that. I don't. Does that answer your question? Okay. Good. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be artist specific. Um, a resume, so like a like an artist CV or um, or an artist resume. That's what I mean. That's what's meant by it in the application. I guess I could oh. reword it so it says artist CV, like resume slash CV. So, um, for example, I'm a filmmaker. So. I would just list my films and film festivals, awards, funders, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's mean? like the typical kind of document that one might have to just sort of like summarize what they've done creatively. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I hate writing those documents and I'm sorry if you don't have it right now. <laughs> no, I, I do, but you know, it's confusing because 
sometimes when I teach, then they want this thing that's like 25 pages long. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you so, mean, yeah. Yeah. It's not so intended just, to be like a professorship CV, but you might have done a lot of stuff and you want us to know it. That's okay. It's yeah, 25 pages. <laughs> if it's 25 pages, that'll be all right. As long as it's not like in novel form, like prose. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Uh, just so I understand clearly, it would be appropriate to tap into the expertise and reach of Headlands as an organization rather than just indicate how the money would be used. Correct. Yeah, that's what we want to do. We're trying to be clear that um, we can give you money, right? Like, which we want if we have it. And we do have some money that we can use. But we're trying to be a completely supportive organization and have more contact with the artists. And this is helpful to our organization because um, it helps us to understand what resources we actually have, right? So that's what I was trying to say. Like our traditional programs, they're kind of formed and we say, here it is, use it, right? And then like it, it feels less flexible because there's not a formal mechanism for like ideating it. We're kind of bringing you into the organization. Um, Abby, do you have another question? No. Oh, okay, okay. How many finalists will be selected from the short application? Six for three spots. Right. Good questions. Um, is there anything else I can answer? Is it potentially okay if we don't see how we currently engage barrier audiences, communities, but want to? Yeah, I mean, you should, so the, what, I, what I was saying at the last info session, and, um, and I'll share my email again, is that um, the short application, you shouldn't overthink it. <laughs> you should answer just basically what you, what you believe, I think, because if, um, if you kind of try to position it a little bit differently than you are, it'll make the fellowship worse for you, if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, there's, there's opportunities to kind of apply uh, more than once, although this, you know, it's three at a time right now, and we're hoping to grow it. So the initial cohorts will be three. But we're hoping that in the next few years that the cohorts will grow to like six or eight or even more. So that like, you know, during the year, we'll have 12 or 16 or maybe even a couple more artists at a time in the program. Um, but that's something that we need to do over time. So there's my email address again. Uh, let's see. Will this and the previous info session be available online? Oh, I, I, I think we'll probably put one of them online. Uh, I promise I didn't say anything advantageous to anyone in the other one or something. I think I'm basically saying the same thing, but I'll, I'll work, I'll talk with our communications folks about um, putting this online. All right, uh, any other questions? Oh, sure, just for the folks who can make it. Makes sense. Um, all right. Well, if there are no other questions, and there can be, I'm not saying you can't have them, but I'm starting to talk in a way that makes it so that this is ending. <laughs> um, then just thank you for coming. And thanks for being interested. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'll sit here as this winds down in case there are straggling, like lingering questions. 
but otherwise, um, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you coming out.